Last one. Come on. There we go. This one's uh, a little different. So let's talk. There's a whole bunch of approaches we can take to this one. All right. First of all, what do you see? I'll tell you because we're on camera and the camera won't be able to hear you guys, but they can hear me because I'm, I'm speaking to the camera. So I'll be your brain and your mouths and, and I, I'm just going to do the problem. All right, deal with it. So what do you see? Here's what I see. Right off the bat, I see a squared term. Okay, so maybe at some point I'm going to bring in some uh, substitution for that, just maybe, we don't know yet. Um, I see two terms on the left. When I say two terms, I see this product, I see a plus sign, and then I see sine theta. Now on the right, I only see one term. So if I'm gonna make this look like this, chances are I might have to combine these somehow, maybe, all right? Maybe I can factor something out, maybe, all right? But these are all the thoughts that are going through my head right now. I also see cosecant, cosine, and sine. So I see three different trig terms, right? And then another cosecant over here. Having more than three trig terms might make this more complicated. So maybe I should only have two different types of trig terms, like sine and cosine. So I know that cosecant is one over sine. And I, I, scout's honor, I've never done this proof. So I have no idea how this is gonna go. Just so you guys, I mean, I'm modeling the behavior that, that, that is necessary to get through some of these, okay? I've never done it, so here's my first approach. I'm gonna write everything in terms of sine and cosine because I know this is one over sine. I'll write this as cosine squared over one plus sine theta, I'll write that over one. And I'm writing that over one just because I recognize this is a fraction. So having this as a fraction, because I'm supposed to be adding them, I'm not supposed to be, maybe I'm supposed to be, adding this to this. So having that as a fraction right away might help. So I've got cosine squared over sine theta plus sine theta over 1 equal to 1 over sine theta. All right, here's where I'm at. I see two legitimate options at this point. You guys want to do option A or option B? Everybody will take a vote. Raise your hand if you want to do option A. Raise your hand if you want to do option B. And you have no idea what these options are. But option B, option B takes it. Here's option B, okay? Because option A was two fractions. I'm gonna write them together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add them. That was option A. I'm gonna to try to combine these with a common denominator, okay? So, you know, stopping by the woods on a snowy evening. You guys ever heard of that? You never heard of stopping by the woods in a snowy snow Robert Frost poem? No. I took the left path less traveled and it has made all the difference? No? Alright. I saw two I saw two paths in the wood. Honestly, what do they teach you in English class here? You, you guys need to you not you guys need to culturize yourself. Alright. Stop the video right now, pause it, open a new tab, and type in stopping uh, stopping in the woods on a snowy evening. Do it. Robert Frost. Look it up. I took the path less traveled and it has made all the difference. So we're gonna go two we're gonna go two routes. We're gonna take one route, this will be option A, where I'm going to turn this into a fraction with sine as the denominator. I'm gonna combine I want to combine the two terms to create one fraction. Because on the right I have one fraction. Take the two, put them together to make it one. But to do that, I need this common denominator. So this is going to be sine theta, right? Well, how do I make that sine theta? By 
multiplying the bottom by sign, right? The fastest way to get a common denominator is to multiply these together. But if I multiply the bottom by sign, I have to multiply the top. And on top there will be sine squared. Ooh. I might be onto something. I'm not sure, but I might be onto something because now I've got these. I like that. I like where it's headed. That's why you're smiling. All right? Now, here's option B. Option B was to recognize at this point, so block this out of your, your field of view. Option B was, well, sine, sine, sine. Right? It's no good. So I'm going to bring in 1 minus sine squared for that. So in blue, what I have right now are the two left, I have the left side written down twice, right? Not to confuse you, this, this might get a little confusing. But option A, option B for what to do on the left. The right, what are you going to do? There's nothing to do here. So I just got to try to make each one of these look like that. Let's come back over here. I can now combine these to be cosine squared plus sine squared over sine. And what is cosine squared plus sine squared? One. One. Is that a good substitution to make? Yeah. It certainly is, because that's what I'm trying to get on the right. So, at this point, mission accomplished. I saw two fractions. I combined them to make one singular term that was the term on the right. Check. That's one approach. The second approach, completely different, right? Oh, wait. I don't want cosine. I want sines. Because everything else is in terms of sine. So I bring this in using those Pythagorean identities. Now I have a difference in the numerator with a singular denominator. So go back and look at your list if you want. One method is to decompose the fraction. So this becomes 1 over sine theta minus sine squared over sine plus sine over 1. You still with me? Mm -hmm. This is nice. Remember, this is on the left side. So I got that, and I got that. So, ooh, you know. Let's see. What can I do here? Decompose. Decomposing, though, would only make sense if there was a sum or a difference. Right? This is sine squared. This is sine. So I have a squared term over something that's not. But it's the same base. So what does that turn into? Sine. This is sine theta. What's x squared over x? X. X. The, the x, one of the x's cancels on the top with the x on the bottom. So what happens here? This is sine theta, right? Minus sine theta, technically. So I have 1 over sine theta minus sine theta plus sine theta. These terms will cancel, and I have 1 over sine theta. Totally different approach, same solution. Hopefully that video wasn't too long.